We're live. We are live. We are long ago in a galaxy far, far away. We are. <laughs> we're not that far away, but <laughs> here we are. From some people, we are far, far away. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining. I'm Jenny. I'm Paul. And we're with Go Box Art Crate. That's us. And tonight is our annual May the 4th project. Mm -hmm. So, Paul, tell us about your painting that you're teaching tonight. Sweet. Let's do it. So, I wanted to do like a the Death Star over Endor. And so, this is what we came up with. Um, this was a lot of fun for me. I actually always enjoy this. this I Star think it's Wars my one. favorite Star Wars one that we've ever done. Although I, I really did like the Ewok. <laughs> the Ewok was fun. Uh, last year was a bit of a challenge because the Typhon, or we did X Wings last year, and that was a little bit challenging. <laughs> um, but anyway, I've always liked uh, Return of the Jedi. I mean, it was it was came out when I was like seven. So, so we were totally we into were the Ewoks because right I was actually, seven as well. <laughs> this is, no, I guess it would have been eight because this is actually the forty year anniversary. <laughs> Thanks for giving our ages away. Oh my. Ooh. <laughs> I guess we were like, we weren't born yet. No. We weren't born yet. <laughs> we were anyway, negative eight. <laughs> so this is the 40-year anniversary. Hi, kids. Um, of Return of the Jedi. So this was actually an accident that we ended up doing a Return of the Jedi themed painting. Um, but yeah, I actually like, I have my own little Return of the Jedi story and that I actually got to skip school to go to open the opening day. Um, of Return of the Jedi. Of Return of the Jedi. Yeah. And Darth Vader was on the roof of the theater. I remember that. He was. Yeah. I like all these little cozy fires, and I think yeah, they so that's a lot of fun. really end up making the painting come together. Like you just you see that like that's the the village. That's the, the Ewoks, Ewoks so, yeah. out. Yeah. One of the things I think we're going to do when we do this is I think we're going to brighten up this kind of. Oh yeah, you had um, said that kind of area behind so that these trees kind of stand out a little bit more. Um, that was something that like I, I thought about afterwards, and then we've got the. The Star Wars star from the original movie poster oh, out of there. So nice. And I've got some the the Death Star is actually a lot of fun to paint. That is gonna be ninety percent of what we spend our time on on the painting. So Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, I could see that being it's, a it's time not, consuming thing. Yeah, it's not that difficult. You know what I would like? Yes. Can you grab a, one of our small paint bottles that the we ship the paint out in? Yeah, it's right behind. Oh. Actually, you have a longer arm. You yeah. Can reach it. So you're going to. I need, get it. You're get, everybody's going to need a coaster that came with your kits. So you need there. Here's we need one of these because that's actually going to be. We're going to use it as a reference for when we do our Death Star. We're not going to actually trace it. There's one. Right there. No, I got it. I get it. So we actually, I've got a little trick I'm going to show you about how we use this to make a bigger circle. Um, normally it's pretty easy, but in this case, since there's a lot of broken up things that you see through i've got a little trick we're going to use and then uh, i am actually going to use one of these jars to trace for the what is that called that's where the cannon i don't know what it's called the laser beam comes out of that the laser beam it's the big <laughs> ion cannon that they use Somebody to blow knows, up planets yeah. somebody will, will look it up for us but anyway so uh, we got Luke and Darth are facing off over here behind us with their lightsabers and see the lights flashing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, we're having a lot of fun tonight and um, I do like these like fun ones that are not part of the subscription box because it is, I think it's more of a casual, let's have fun and Jenny's going to bust out some uh, random Star Wars knowledge tonight. Um, we did trivia night last week, last year, but I think just the knowledge this time is going to be more fun. Um, okay. How are we going to make the intent? Okay, yeah. So this that's actually a lot of fun. This, I, I had a lot of fun with this. So um, let's go ahead and get started. Let me get, check this out. We've got our Star Wars transition. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a lot of fun. We, we had to do that just because. Um, let's toast. Oh, if we should have toasted before Sorry. we switched over. But let's go ahead and toast to uh, George Lucas, Star Wars, Disney. All that fun stuff. Keyword, keyword, keyword. Cheers. Cheers. And um, shout out to who's our winery that we're drinking tonight? Bravero. Bravero in Cellars Newburgh. Newburgh. Yeah. All right. So what we're going to really do on this painting is we really get started out with getting our background. And believe it or not, I'm going to bring the original up here. We don't actually use any black in the sky. 
So it might look like we do. We save the black just for the foreground. We're going to achieve this up here using uh, more of a... This fire red is something we don't use very often, but it's a little bit on the orange side, so it tends to take our blue just a little darker. Um, so, did we not use turquoise? You gave me these colors. You have to make it with the yellow and blue. No, we use turquoise. Oh, well, well we're going to improvise tonight. <laughs> All right. All right, so what we're going to start off with is we are going to, yeah, we can do that. We're going to start off, we're going to try to mix up our little turquoise color because I know I used it. But we're going to go with what we shipped, right? It's what you told me to ship. <laughs> All right. We're going to take some uh, of our phthalo blue. We're going to add a little tiny bit of yellow to it. And we're just going to add white. You're going to need to add a little bit more yellow. Oh, this is going to be interesting. More blue. So you get kind of a teal. Oh, you know what? Yeah, this is going to be interesting. All right, guys, we are deviating. We are going to have more of just a baby blue sky, I guess. The more yellow you add to it, you can get it. A little bit, but it's hard. Yeah, it's more muted. Yeah. Anyway, so we're just going to start with our, our baby blue. And we're just going to cut right across here. We're going to add a little bit more white. We want this to be really pale. If you have this month, uh, well, actually, no. Last month did we use, I'm trying to remember what we used last month. That's all right. This is going to work out okay. It's mm -hmm. just going to be di a little bit different than what the original it's was. Slightly muted. Yeah. Well, a lot muted. But that's all right. We just roll with what we got, right? That's what we do. <laughs> all right. So we're just going to start working our way up. And as we work our way up, we can add a little bit more of our phthalo blue. We didn't really talk about the colors, but we're just going to roll with them as we go. We'll be like the closing credits in movies, like in order of appearance. We'll just introduce them. So we're just going to start keep adding a little bit of phthalo as we work our way up, and we're going to blend it in. This is going to work out good, guys. It's going to look nice. It's just nice, gonna... Kim. I was going to recommend that. <laughs> you have turquoise from a shipment from before. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is, it's just not as a uh, It actually might. Greenish, I guess. Yeah, and it actually might end up looking better, like less acidic. Pretty acidic on that original. Yeah, and that's okay. But we're going to come in here and we're just going to get more of the Stalo Blue blending in. Shout out to anybody who's new tonight or anybody who has not participated in our live streams. Thank you for joining us. Sit back, relax, enjoy yourself. Oh, Kim says that's called the full scale super laser. <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, you, uh, she's been watching Bob Ross this week. You are making a pretty little sky. That's right. Yeah. So you can, you can blend this out a little bit more than you than I normally recommend in paintings. I feel like sometimes when we start going into more sci-fi, we don't do a lot of sci-fi, but when we do more like fantasy-ish type of paintings, it's okay to um, be a little bit more crisp with this. So, fun Paul story. My dad actually grew up in the Redwoods and we used to go visit family when I was a kid, and I remember right after Return of the Jedi came out, of course, I had to go run through the Redwoods and pretend I was on a speeder bike, chase, you know, chasing the scout troopers. Because <laughs> that's, you know, that's where it was filmed. You knew that, right? Yeah. Okay, just checking. Jenny's being quiet tonight. <laughs> I'm not. I just put too much yellow in my sky, so I'm trying to correct. You know, it'll be fine. It, you know, kind of a little bit of a smokiness is, is good with this. <laughs> Indoor has smog. <laughs> well, I mean, you, we've got fires down below, so, and, you know, maybe they're battling it out right now. <laughs> so we're going to start with this. This is going to start out a little lighter, um, and we're going to go ahead and build up more darkness into it. Like right now, it looks really bright and blue. 
Um, and that's fine because I really think of like when I think of um, Endor and the scenery, I really think about like the Corona around the, you know what I mean by Corona? Mm-hmm. It's like the, the atmosphere really kind of shows, at least in my mind it does. So we're going to go ahead and just get this going. We can pull this color down a little further. I actually think this is going to look really cool with the improvised colors. <laughs> I am not at all afraid of making adjustments as we go. We've had that happen before. I don't remember. Um... I think it was in studio, and you know how it, I was always really good about writing down the colors we were going to use? Mm -hmm. Like, I was awful about it. Yes, he and was very awful. Still is, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> digs aside. <laughs> uh, Gotta get my digs in. I ended up putting the wrong blue on the palettes. Well, there's like so many different blues that we had. It was kind of ridiculous. Yeah, I think there were times where the only time it was ever big a big problem is if we were using uh, ultramarine or used a, like cobalt and then accidentally put ultramarine because the ultramarine we used was not very <sighs> opaque. It was a better for tinting. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm just going to go ahead and. Just kind of take a little bit of our thalo mixed into our starting blue and just kind of soften this up a bit. Trust me, we're going to get there. Trust you, I hardly know you. <laughs> but this is going to be fun because this, we're, we're going to make some little adjustments and I think this is actually going to end up looking more wall ready. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm good at finding my way through this stuff. <laughs> you know what I saw? I saw a couple of like where people had done like uh, travel posters of different planets and stuff. And I thought, like the Star Wars like yeah, style? Yeah. But those no, the vintage travel, poster travel posters style. but using Star Wars as a yeah. topic. Yeah, and there was an Endor one that was really cool. Like, I think I've seen that or one, at least one Endor one. I did actually put together a list of, instead of doing Star Wars trivia like we've done in the past, because the questions are kind of obscure and, and well, that's like. That's I said, you were going to bust out some knowledge. But you're not going to, we're not going to ask for questions. No, I am doing, um, let me find the, I had to email the list to myself. Oh. I just did um, random Star Wars factoids that like a lot of people wouldn't know. I kind of search for obscure things. Okay, cool. So I'll kind of read those out here and there as yeah. you're, when you're not doing instructions because they're, they're fun to know for Star Wars fans, for right sure. On. Yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to start darkening up this top area a bit. And to do that, um, what we're going to do is we're going to mix together a little bit of our phthalo blue and a little bit of our fire red. And you can see, you put those two together and you really get this dark color. And we're just going to start... In fact, if you're still wet at the top, you can just start mixing that fire red right in. The fire red, so most of the time for you guys who get the subscription box, we ship our uh, ruby red, which is just also called bright red. And it's more of a blue based red and fire red is more of a yellow orange based red. So when you mix it with other colors, it's a lot more grayish. It's a lot more muted. Like if you... This color that you made is mm. a very grayish purple. Yeah. But if you used fire or our regular red with that, it would be a very vibrant violet. Yeah, so you've got a little bit of the orange. It's it's very much it's like almost like a dark orange really. And it really um it kind of brings in some green, but it just neutralizes things. And I my paint is still wet at the top, so I'm just mixing it right in right on the canvas. If your paint has dried or you're working, maybe you are working on a different day, you're not working long live with us, you've paused and you're working, go ahead, you can go ahead and mix the two together to get the same effect.
This is going to be one of those things where I really do think that our oopsie that I'm going to keep paying attention to <laughs> is going to pay off. Sometimes you just got to listen to the universe and what it's trying to tell you. Yeah, I was wondering, like, how you mix that turquoise and be like, okay, well, he has this, like, he's the, the color guy, so. <laughs> yeah. I swear nice I one, you. Paul. Pretty sure. I'm going to have to scroll back through our messages. <laughs> oh, <No>, you're not. <laughs> so you're questioning yourself now. All right. So you can bring this down, uh, you know, maybe a couple inches. But I'm trying to get it blended in. So I don't do a lot of blending when I paint, but tonight we're doing it. <laughs> okay, how about one of those Star Wars factoids? Let's see. Interesting factoids. Do, 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 do. So I, I looked at a couple Hold on, different just real sites. Quick. Yeah. I'm bringing a little bit more blue. of the Thalo blue to the party okay. going a little further. Okay. I want to bring it. I want to make sure that we get enough darkness in the sky that it feels like, you know, it's space. Mm -hmm. Oops, I got a little bit of. Oh, how was Greta's birthday? It was great. We uh, on her actual birthday. Oh, was it last week? Yeah. Last week, her and I worked um, the high school musical, Beauty and the Beast, doing the wigs and makeup and all that the glam squad and so we actually worked on her actual birthday and we brought in a cake and all that there were 67 high schoolers we were working with and she was the most popular person that night <laughs> because of the cake and then her actual the sushi the sushi group was really fun yeah, although there were a couple friends we couldn't get to try sushi no matter what we did but i mean i don't think i tried sushi till i was quite a bit older than a teenager yeah so I didn't blame him. <laughs> so this is going to work out cool. Um, I just was wanted to, I accidentally got a little bit of my darker color on my lower sky. So if you guys saw me brushing over here, I was just trying to fix my little oopsie. But as we know, there's no oopsies. Just the universe trying to guide our hand. Happy little accident. Nope. See, I was trying to avoid the copyright thing, and you just went right for it. That's all right. I can do that. All right. I can, and I did it. Drop some knowledge, Jenny. <laughs> oh, drop some knowledge. Okay, Okay, let's wait. Hold on. See. Okay. <laughs> uh, just be careful, because we are doing a lot of brushing. Um, just be careful that you don't start lifting the paint off the canvas. That can happen. <laughs> If you start to lift the paint off the canvas, stop immediately and move on to a different part. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, so I have two things I'm going to drop real quick. Darth Vader was almost voiced by Orson Welles. That is who George Lucas wanted. To, cool. When, isn't he the one that did... What did he do? He's like an author and... Well, he did the... Um, did he do War of the Worlds? He did. Yeah, that's yeah. what I thought. Okay. And then uh, the other one was Robert England. Was al he almost played the role of Luke. He was considered to play Luke. And Robert England is, for those of you who don't know, he's Freddy the actor Kruger. who played Freddy Krueger. Yeah. It's like, that's a little different. <laughs> okay. <laughs> mm. Can't imagine it. And Jodie Foster was up for the role of Leia. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah she she probably actually, would have been good. She was actually, um, the only reason she didn't get it is because she was too well known already. Yeah, he really was after casting unknowns. And just, the yeah, Corvette Summer just, like, just locked it up for... Wait for a minute. Was Corvette Summer before? It had it to be before. before. Yeah, it yeah, came out in, I think, 76. I think he, yeah. So... It's so uh, Mark Hamill. Right? Yeah. He, play, he was in a small movie called Corvette Summer. <laughs> it's actually pretty well known. <laughs> Is it? Yeah. My dad always loved that movie. He just liked the Corvette. Probably. Such a, a 70s Corvette. All right. <laughs> so I'm going to take a little bit of our color that we've got that we use the dark, and I just added a little bit more white to it, so it's just kind of a lighter gray tone, and I'm just going to fill in this bottom. Now, this is where you're lightening it. You're going to do kind of more of a foggy. I'm just adding a base. Okay. Yeah. 
but yeah, that, that is what it's going to be eventually. Okay. Don't need to blend out this. I am actually... We just finished watching season three of The Mandalorian. Um, which, we, because of the play and everything, we ended up being a little bit behind. It was that. a musical. It was Beauty and the Beast, by the way. It was really oh, yeah. great. The high schoolers did amazing. Yeah, it was really good. They were so much fun. I loved them. Um... And then I am actually really excited for the Ahsoka series. Yeah, that, that looks, looks good. That looks really good. Star Wars has got to do some work. Though. Which one is the color you're putting on? Is it that? Yeah. Okay. So it's the dark color from the sky, and I just added... I had to wait. I had to remix out. them. Yeah, okay. and it doesn't have to be perfect. It's yeah. kind of a dark denim-y kind of color. Dirty denim. Dirty denim. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Carrie Fisher just got her Walk of Fame star. Oh, How her did daughter she just get it? it. Yeah. Now. Like, wow, that's so cool. I would have thought that. Do you mean Mark Hamill was there? I assume that's what you mean. I get those the names mixed up too, and I get I get it mixed up with that ice skater, <laughs> Scott Hamilton. <laughs> it's like, wait, wait. I'm gonna pretend you didn't <laughs> just say that. Hey, I'm, a, I'm a lot better at it now, now that he uh, played Skips on the regular show. <laughs> I love that Mark Hamill has just embraced that he's Mr. Star Wars. Yeah. Unlike Harrison Ford, who's like, I don't even want to acknowledge I had anything to do with that movie. Wait, does he do that? Yeah, he's kind of a snob about it. Funny. That's funny, because, okay, so wasn't Harrison Ford like a carpenter on the set? And he had yeah, to fill he, in? Yeah, but he was an actor, too. Okay. Because he had been in American Graffiti. Oh, that's right. I can't imagine anyone else playing Han Solo, to be honest. Well, I can't imagine anybody else playing Luke Skywalker. No. Anymore. Okay, so what, actually, that brings me to another little random fact about Luke Skywalker. He was originally going to be called Luke's Star Killer. Yeah. Did you know that? Yes, I did. I did not know that. And then they, uh, George Lucas opted to not do that because of the like Charles Manson yep. murders that I don't know. Maybe those were around that time. Were they in the they late were in 70s? the in the mid seventies? Yeah. So Star Killer was taken. In fact, it was off. originally it was called The Adventures of Luke Star, Star Killer. Yeah. Yeah, it had a really long title. It was crazy long. I'm trying to see where, see where. That was the yeah. way. The name Star Killer was changed due to the negative connotations associated with the Charles Manson murders at the time. The ones uh, where they murdered Sharon Tate. Yeah. All right. So I just did, I put this color in at the base. It's it's just it's just underpainting at this point. We're gonna work with it. I actually am gonna bring some more blue into it. Um, but for right now, I just wanted to make sure we had every, you know, something on all of the canvas. Okay. So let's go ahead and start laying out our Death Star. I think I want to move this. So I think it's really cool. Like one of the things I've seen with um, other fan art is almost like where the, the Death Star itself is almost like a like ghosty, like it's just kind of a ghosted image. And so you can do that, but I'm going to move this in about like so. And we're going to make it a lot bigger than that. <laughs> yeah. And I've got a trick on how we're going to do that. I'm okay. Gonna, I'm going to take my biggest brush. I'm going to rinse it off really good. And wipe it dry. Now, the trick to this is... We are basically going to use the width of the brush around to, but don't do it yet. Okay. There's a trick. Okay. We're going to use the width. I'm just going to dip one very little amount of paint on one corner. corner. And so then I can kind of work my way around and I can be like, okay, there's going to be dust star up here. There's going to be, I'm just going around. So you're skipping some areas. Yeah, so this way we can leave some kind of areas. Like, look like they were bitten into. <laughs> yeah. Well, it just hasn't been built yet. Yeah. For the longest time when I was young, I thought that was the exploded version of the Death Star. I bet a lot of people probably did. So you can just kind of break it up. And more than anything, what we're doing is we're just kind of getting a general outline. So are we going about like three quarters of an inch, half an inch away from the coaster? 
Yeah, because this brush is about an inch, actually. So this, yeah, the brush is three quarter inch. So and I'm just gonna hold, keep it in place. My paint's still a little wet. It's okay if it is, actually. And we can kind of just, it can you can leave it dashed because then what from this point, you know, if you want to come in and use a smaller brush, for example, and and this is I did it this way where I've we've got the dashes down below. I'm going to use you can use your number eight or number four or whatever, and you can kind of get a pretty good representation. Or you could come back later and you know clean it up, whatever. But really, a lot of this is just going to be broken up. So just like that, that works good. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to take one of my other paint bottles and I'm just going to put kind of off center about like that. I'm going to go ahead and just trace that using my number eight. Just so we have a little reference and I'm just using white. There you go, Jenny. So that's the basic vibe of our uh, Death Star. Shape. The basic vibe. The basic vibe. And so then the next thing what we're going to do is I want to mix up, like we don't want it to be white. Um, so... I'm actually just going to kind of brush, start brushing some of this in. Just be careful that you don't get too much of it going. Like I'm just... Kind of letting your brush run out. Yeah, I'm just using the paint that's already on the canvas for right now. And I'm just mm -hmm. kind of... One of the things that really helps with this is if you really wanted to get into it, you could use your brush and just go, you use like your number four would be good. You could just use basically vertical slashes. And you can kind of come back and use some horizontal ones too. This kind of starts getting some of our brokenness feeling now the it does have like kind of a band that goes right through the middle like so so let's go ahead and just kind of rough that in this is going to be like i'm actually glad we didn't do instructions on this one printed instructions yeah because it would have been hard to describe <laughs> yeah Yeah, we do run into that a lot where it's a lot easier to give the verbal instructions than to actually type it out and print it out because we're limited by the amount of space we have yep. with those printed sheets. And so it's not like we... And plus, people don't want to read giant novels. So we always recommend people do the video tutorial. Although there are a few people that say they just prefer to use the, the instruction sheets. Yeah. Oh, Daniel's here. Daniel went and saw us. Return of the Jedi in the theater yesterday. Kind of jealous. Nice. All right. Was it all scratchy like the original? No, it's, <laughs> it's all probably all like digitized. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I'm gonna work with my number eight for the most part while we start laying in this Death Star because we're just gonna get right into it. And to get the gray color, so we need it to be gray. We're just going to mix together uh, our blue. And our fire red equal parts and we're just going to add quite a bit of white so it's actually almost going to be like a lavendery color it's really good great lavender yeah and so i'm going to go ahead and just go go right along this is our little channel what's in this channel is that what all know. the offices are why do you need those kind of details because I have OCD. <laughs> I, I have no idea. It's a giant Pokeball. <laughs> it is kind of a Are you Pokeball. putting more gray somewhere else? 
Yeah, so we're just using the same color, mm -hmm. and we're just going to start blocking in. And I want you to really think, like, all this is very mechanical, so we want everything to be... Um, vertical or horizontal. Vertical or horizontal. And obviously, when you get out around the edges, it's going to be a, more of a curved vertical. That's what I noticed about your original. You have a lot of vertical and horizontal lines. Yeah, so if you... Like, feeling. I actually looked at a, a photo as I was working on it, and um, you really notice the vertical and horizontal um, framework of it. Hmm. So this is kind of like the way I painted it is this kind of got um, like the horizon area is fairly filled in. Circumference, I guess. So you can paint right up to what was the laser called? Uh, let's see, it's called full scale super laser. You can get right up to the edge of the full scale super laser. We can always come back and retrace it if we want to, if we need to. Um, we're not going to get too far away from this channel. We'll come back in and we'll reinforce the channel. Um, but you can kind of start kind of pulling some chunks down. There's little worker ships flying back and forth. And we got a lot of glare tonight. <laughs> not too bad. It's just that upper dark blue corner. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we, we forgot to mention we have lightsaber action going on back here. Actually, I did mention it. <laughs> oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. So, really, like, you can even thin your paint down just a little bit if you want to. Oh, there's a star. Um, but, or you can use your number eight, but really just think, okay, there's some coming in here. This is coming down. And you can see, like, even though I haven't done much, you kind of get a feel for what's going on here. Like, I see what it is. I recognize this. I've seen this in movies before. <laughs> this is a really weird moon. That's no moon. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Wait, what is... What, what, that's in what? the first Star Wars. That's He's, no moon. They're flying to that small moon. That's not a moon. <laughs> That's funny. So in the picture I looked at, this top part was fairly filled in too. So when I really did, when I painted the first one, I had filled it in more and I didn't like it. And so I had to go back in and paint in the sky a little bit more. And I didn't love that either. So... Um, that's why this time we're starting out with it less full. Yeah, I remember you saying you had to go back and like add a bunch of dark blue background to hide some of the stuff that you didn't really like. It wasn't that I didn't like it, it, it was too solid. I, okay, wanted, I wanted it to feel more broken up. Oh. Okay, more Star Wars back. Let's see here. Yeah. Actors who auditioned for Han Solo were, can you name any, Paul? Didn't you Christopher didn't? Walken? Yes. That's actually, I'm really surprised you remember that. Okay. Kurt Russell, Christopher Walken, Sylvester Stallone, John Travolta, Chevy Chase, and James Woods. Do you know how bad that would have been with Sylvester Stallone? It would have not been the same. <laughs> I'll just say that. <sighs> Yeah, Harrison Ford did a, a great job. So I'm just adding a little bit more white to my mix so I can start making it kind of stand out a little bit more. And we're just going to, we're not going to do a whole lot more right now because we want to let this dry a bit. It looks like you do a pretty choppy dark yeah. patch here. Um, You don't have to. 
It looks more like it, it looks is, like though. the backside. Yeah. Welcome to the backside. <laughs> the dark side of the. Yeah. So if you wanted to do <laughs> that, you dark. just use a little bit more of your dark color and. But more than anything, we're going to come back and hit this with a lot of lighter <laughs> gray as well. Welcome to the back side. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that just doesn't sound quite as <laughs> intimidating. <laughs> it could be. You never know. All right, so... It can really be really rough. That's the thing I think is is going to be hard for people is letting it stay rough enough. Are you rough enough? This is like a the scaffolding. Is that what we're sketching? <laughs> no, it's not scaffolding. It's just the structure. So I'm just going to take a little bit of white here and just highlight the inside of this and then a little bit on the outside over here. Just gonna start laying it out so we don't lose it. Let me show you. See, it's really easy. Already got kind of that <laughs> feeling. So we got our live class all dialed in for those who are local. Um, it's gonna be held at the Sherwood Arts Center. May 20th is our first one, and we got wine lined up for it finally. That was my, my biggest hang-up, and that's the wine we're drinking tonight, actually. It's from that winery. Yep. So it's Bravero Cellars is pouring our wine, and we're pretty excited. I did post a link on our Facebook group page, which is just Go Box Art Crate group, and so if you are local and you want to sign up, please do. All right. So we're going to leave that alone because I want that to dry a bit. We can always add back to it. It's, it's really easy to keep working on it. Um, but we're, I want to let it dry because right now when I'm trying to add to it, it just is blending in and I don't want that. Um, what we're going to work on next, again, we had a little oopsie in our communication with the colors we shipped out. So um, we are going to work on getting these background trees in. And one of the things you want to make sure is like if you're going to put a tree in, it needs to go, if it's going to be up excuse me, near the Death Star. It actually needs to go over the top of the Death Star because it's not like floating at the surface of the planet or the moon. So we are going to mix up um, a, like kind of a, a smoky greenish color and I'm going to use my biggest brush. So I'll just mix it up. Let's see. Let's just mix right here. So we're going to take a little bit of blue. We're going to take a little tiny bit of our fire red and we're going to take some yellow Blue, fire, red, and yellow. Yep. Not very much of the fire red. Mostly the blue and... No, you, we want enough to darken it up. I'm going to add just a little bit of white. What this needs to be is a little bit darker than your sky color. And we're just going to start... All right, maybe I should zoom in real quick. Let's zoom in. All right, I'm gonna zoom in pretty tight there. Just gonna take my brush on edge like this. And I've noticed um, one of the things that I've seen people struggle with in teaching in the studio is the idea that we can use this fat brush in different directions. So our instinct is to always use it this way. And it applies to our smaller brushes too. So if we're using, let's say our number eight, use it on its skinny edge and you can get finer kind of trees and stuff. So we're just going to come through here and create. I'm kind of creating a pattern on accident. Just a tree line. This is the trees that are way far in the back. Yep. And what I'm going to do is after I've painted them on, I'm just going to come through. I'm just going to drag that color down. Now, are we going all the way across? We are going all the way across. OK. So I'm going to be a little bit higher on these outside edges. Just going to pull this color down into our background. I'll zoom back out so you guys can see how that looks. I know at first it doesn't look like a tree. Now I've noticed when I paint these, I always have a tendency, they all kind of lean this way. So I need to make sure I turn my wrist a little bit more. It's okay for them to lean uh, a little bit. 
And it's actually really good if they lean a little bit each direction. This kind of reminds me of the one Halloween painting we did <laughs> that had the haunted house. The one I did with the vintage pumpkin witch, I think it was called. Mm -hmm. We did the trees like this, similar color. Mm -hmm. You know, I just had a memory of that while we were doing this. You know, it's like exactly six months to Halloween now for everyone who's a Halloween fan. <laughs> Need to start designing our paintings. Jenny is like, Jenny and Greta and Hayden have the daily update on uh, when Halloween is. <laughs> Didn't you say there's like a special name? Yeah, well, Beltane, I think, is the English name. Maybe, Beltane? Or, yeah, however you say it. And But there is like a German name I saw on TikTok. It was like, it's a really long, weird name. That they won't even attempt. Now, I went as Star Wars characters for Halloween twice. Okay, who did you dress up as? Well, the first year I went was probably, it was... I think I've seen some pictures. Like 1980, it was Empire. Mm hmm And that was my kindergarten or first grade year. And it was like, the whole rage was like the plastic aprons with the plastic mask. Yes. You know, so... And then I... I really wanted that because that's what all my we friends were doing. We couldn't breathe, but... <laughs> so I got C-3PO that year because that's all, all that was left. <laughs> hey, I've got a factoid about C-3PO. Do you know what C-3PO stands for? Uh, protocol something. Well, you got one word right. Cyborg 3 Protocol. That was one of my... Things I wrote down. Cyborg 3 Protocol. All right. That's cool. And then the other one uh, I dressed up as Luke Skywalker from Return of the Jedi. So that would have been 1980. Really? Did you wear black then? Yeah. I don't remember seeing any Now that time I had all custom. Mom sewed my costume and had to have that gray flap that flapped over when he unbuttoned his shirt the gray flap yeah the collar huh. like it unbuttoned and it had like a little gray flap wow. have you even seen star wars it's been a while actually i mean i've seen it so many times but it has been a while since i've really seen it last <laughs> i watched them all a couple years ago when our dog was getting old and jenny and greta and hayden had gone up to a Scamania Lodge for a paint, one of our painting weekends, and I was home alone, so I was like, I watched them all. I put the kids to work. Yeah, our dog uh, couldn't travel at that time, and it's like we knew she was going to pop on at any time, and someone had to be with her. Yeah, we couldn't leave her. Mm -mm. But, okay, how about another? Let's do it. I just got a little too carried away with my tree there, but that's all right. Oh, this one painters will like. The original Star Wars trilogy uses hand-painted special effects for certain scenes created through oil paint on plexiglass. That's cool. Yeah, I thought that was super cool. And now I can really see it. And isn't their original, like, set on Tatooine, isn't it, like, still there in Morocco? So, you know, it's interesting. I just saw something about this. Okay. It is actually a hotel. <laughs> oh, it is? I want to go there. <laughs> and it was a hotel. Except for the sand. It gets everywhere. <laughs> it's really scratchy. It was originally a hotel before, and they hired it to be used. And you can actually, I saw what I saw was this meme. It's like, you can go stay at the, what, the... Galaxy's Rim, whatever, at Disneyland for like seven or eight hundred or a thousand dollars a night, or you can go to the actual Luke's oh, actual childhood home and stay there for like forty five dollars a night. <laughs> Fun, yeah, that would be cool. Oops, little there was another one that I learned. It was actually really fun to go through the websites. Uh, I think the, I want to give credit to the websites. It was like Virgin Radio UK was one of the websites. And then I didn't write down the other one. <laughs> Sorry, but I only picked like 
two things from it. Um, the actor Alec McGuinness, or Alec, Alec Guinness, Guinness. Yeah. who played Obi-Wan, the old Obi-Wan Kenobi, he negotiated 2% of the gross box office receipts for the Star Wars franchise. And he, uh, with that deal, he uh, made $95 million. <laughs> well, he's uh, well, it says $95 million in value at the time. So I guess that would be like in today dollars. I assume yeah. that's what they mean. So he was actually a really big name artist at the time. Um, actor. So he made uh, he made that money despite him referring to the original trilogy as being in bad taste. Yeah, come he, on, he, Alec. He, he come it. on, he hated it. Yeah, because he's like an old school like theater actor. Oh. All right, so I'm just gonna mix up a little bit of just phthalo blue and white. Okay. I'm gonna add just a tiny little bit of yellow there. There we go. Just kind of a dirty denim, and I'm just gonna go ahead and brush this in. Along this bottom edge. Phthalo blue and white, huh? With a little bit of yellow. Oh, you know what? I think I've already, I'm already doing what you're doing. Yep. And we're just going to... I jumped the gun. Bring this in. Got some glare. For the fog effect? Is that kind yeah, of if you need to use a little bit more blue, you can. You, you don't want to get too light. Okay. Because you want it to still feel like... Is this too light? No, I think that's perfect. It is perfect. Because <laughs> you want it to be light enough that it, um, the trees stand out, but not so light that, because we got another row of trees to go in here, but not so light that it feels like they don't need the fires. Okay. So. Are you going to detail some of those trees too? It looks like. Yep. You do we'll that, do that in a minute. Okay. So let me throw in another. Yep, we're just adding some fog in here. And you can see I'm really blending this out. I'm going to tilt that so you can see it. So it just kind of dissipates out into these trees. Here's one about Ewoks. So Kenny Baker, who played R2-D2, was originally cast as Wicket, but he got food poisoning and the role went to Warwick Davis, also known as the actor from Willow, who was originally an Ewok extra. So he got a main role because of the other guy's food poisoning. And he was only 12 <laughs> years old. Yeah, he was 12. And he was a huge Star Wars fan. That worked out. So, that was like it was the like a universe dream. lining up for him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Willow was one of my favorite childhood movies, and he plays the main role. He's also in the Harry Potter franchise. He's as... also in the new Willow series. He's one of the Gringotts uh, Yeah. Goblins, right? No, he's the... Oh, he's the teacher, Flitwick. yeah. Or what's his name? Flitwick? Flitwick? One of you guys maybe knows. Okay. It's, we're quite, pretty close with that. Yeah. Professor Flitwick. All right, so <laughs> I'm going to take my smallest brush. I'm going to mix up a little bit more of our color that we used for our trees. If you have some left over, perfect. So that was blue, red, yellow, and white. Yep. Less blue and more, I don't know. I can't remember. I'm getting army green right now, so I'm going to make some adjustments. And if you come up, if you get your color and it's just like a little bit off, it's all right. What you can do, because like mine's a little bit off right now. There we go, that's closer. You can always just take it as you go through. And all I'm doing is just adding some horizontal little slashes. I'm not getting real detailed. Something to sort of suggest that they are actual trees. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't need to do all of them, just a few of the bigger ones. Oh, <laughs> look what I just did. Oh, it's all right. Place for a tree. <laughs> How much wine have you had, Jay? <laughs> Not enough to do that. <laughs> I wanted to figure out like some kind of like blue milky looking cocktail to make for tonight. <laughs> no, not blue, purple. Oh, so you could have like whatever that is that he drinks with Aunt Baru and Uncle Ellen. What is that called? I don't know. Somebody knows. 
Yeah, Daniel, you know. What is the blue milk called that Purple. he drinks out of the uh, Tupperware <laughs> cup? Daniel will look it up. Actually, Daniel's probably painting. I think we should have... I think we should have Daniel come paint with us sometime. Yeah, that'd be fun. So we're just detailing a few of these, because not all of them are going to show. Right. And I've kind of got a little bit of my colors off a little bit, but that's okay. You can just take this, whatever color you're putting on right now, you can just kind of smudge it in down here too. We got another row of trees going in, so this is really doesn't matter too much. Maybe I should zoom in on one of these so you guys can see what I'm doing. Bantha milk. <laughs> I thought that's what it might be. All right, so all I'm really doing is I'm just taking my brush and I'm just... Just doing some little uneven kind of choppy. I'll do this one right here. So the bantha are in the, the Boba what, Fett, isn't it? That's what the Tuscan Raiders yeah. ride. Yeah, and they're in like the Boba Fett show, I yeah. think. Yeah. You mean the Mandalorian? Oh, are you talking about the Book of Boba Fett? The Book of Boba Fett. Blech. Book of Boba Fett. That's a tongue twister. Yeah, I think um, they're in that. If I remember I'm pretty right. sure they are. Because I remember one of the, I think the year that came out, that was going to be my May the 4th painting was at Bantha. Maybe I'll do that next, yeah. <laughs> there is a, a new animated series out today called Young Jedi. And ah. it's very chibi Disney-ish. I think you told me about that. Might be cute. Well, chibi means cute. Yep. All right, so there... Oh, I guess I was just off skirt camera there for a minute. Mm. All right. Mm. That's my zoom noise for tonight. I'm going to zoom out. Mm. All right. So we're going to leave that sit for right now. That's our kind of our misty background. I think that looks really neat. We're going to start uh, adding some more brightness to our... Um, Death Star up here. So I'm going to use now my number four brush, which if you guys don't have our brushes, it's about a quarter inch wide, um, and it's a flat brush. It's not a round. You could use a round would work fine. Okay. And um, we're just going to mix up kind of like what we used before, where it's a little bit of the blue, a little bit of the fire red but mostly white. We want this to be very pale. And let's just test it a little bit. Yeah, that's good. That's good. So I'm going to start getting some bulk going on up in here. But not up in here. I'm just kidding. You're using this color right here? No, I'm using this color okay. right here. Okay. Kind of cold in here. Yeah, I don't want to turn the heater on either. No. So last week, uh, while I was working the the high school show, we had ninety degree days and it was hot and we were all just dying. And now this week, when we could have those <laughs> days because we have prom, it's been rainy and thundering, and we have prom on Saturday. And not terribly warm. No, it's not been warm at all. Kind of back down into the 50s. What is up with Oregon? Now, if you don't like the weather, wait five minutes. That's the thing. The thing that they say. So you can start, again, we're just kind of building on what we were doing before. But we want to start adding some more substance. Somebody just commented something. Oh, shout out for your brushes. I have a bunch of others that I bought when I first started out, but I only use yours for all my paintings. Yeah, I actually like this style of bristle. Um, I think it suits my style of painting. Paul prefers more of a boar's bristle, boar mm -hmm. bristle brush. Yeah. Because he, he has a definitely more 
rough style of painting. But I love these synthetic <laughs> nylon ones. <laughs> Although I will say uh, sometimes the boar bristle ones are what's needed for certain effects. Yeah. All right, you can use your smallest brush too if you want to. You can even thin this paint down a little bit. But really, I'm really focusing now on, even though I'm getting some substance in here, I'm really focusing on my brush strokes going horizontal and vertical. I'm gonna just leave a little gap. I'm just gonna show you guys what I'm gonna do here. I'm just going to come across here. What do you paint in the middle of your big star laser thingy? Um, I just have the sky still. I must have missed that spark. Uh, I just kind of just added some color. We're going to work on it some more. Okay. Um, but I'm going to go right along here, adding a little bit of highlight. It kind of gets really close to my laser. It's okay if it does. And then you can just move down and leave a little channel. You know, I really thought we should have sent the, a set to Matt and Marissa. They're busy with their new baby. Yeah, they got baby. <laughs> they got baby, but that's why I thought they needed it. Yeah. Actually, their baby is now five months old. Can you believe that? He looks just like Matt. He looks identical to Matt. All right. So you can rinse your brush off a little bit here, too, once in a while. And you can even add a little bit of, have a little bit of water on your brush. And you can use your smallest brush too. Like if you really want to get a little bit more like jagged. In fact, we are going to come through in these edges where it starts to break up. We're going to come back with our smallest brush. Oh, Florida has below average temps too. Huh, that's probably a nice break for you guys though. Maybe, <laughs> depending on what you have going on. Yeah, I just read something today that like most of most of North America is having a a slow onset to spring and summer. Although there are some pockets that are. Well, if you think about it, here just a month ago we had like six inches of snow. That's what's weird. Yeah. Okay, Oregon figured out. So when you get along these edges, just really think I'm going to let this be broken, and you're going to want to let it be bolder than you think. Bold flavor. Bold and broken. And it really starts to come together as we start getting this going. We're going to add a little bit more highlight to this as we get going, too. All right, so I need to move <laughs> down here. Pulls the pool off too much, yeah. Nobody wants to jump into a pool that's like less than like 85 degrees. Except for my grandmother. We talked about this before. <laughs> What was the construction plan of this thing? It was just chaos, wasn't it? Yeah, totally chaos. So many sharp edges. Well, it's huge. Yeah. So like this area, if I leave a little bit of this dark gray showing, it's just, you know, the framework behind it. So if you don't have to cover everything, in fact, it looks better if you don't. But yeah, make sure you're just using the thin edge of your brush. It's something that can be uh, forgotten to do. <laughs> yeah, That's how you sure. get the nice thin lines and then occasionally add some water to your paint if you feel like it's your brush is really dragging. Yeah. And that will... Now we do need to connect it a little bit in some spots so it's not, I mean, like, okay, let's just add a little bit of connection there so it doesn't feel too disconnected. Mm 
Maybe we can do a little bit. I might end up moving my, I think I'm going to move my channel down a little bit. So I'm just going to go ahead and just kind of brush through that. I think in the in the first Star Wars, that was the you know the part when they're like stay on target, stay on target, and they're like flying. He's like it's just like the shooting swamp rats and when they're in that channel thingy. Then... Yeah, well, I you can't know... remember the name of the canyon. Yeah, I can't either. Um, it's on the Death Star though. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So somebody I saw on Instagram may, makes uh, coffee ta or dining tables that are like this beautiful. Handcrafted wood that have a big channel carved in the middle, and yeah. they fill that with resin. Well, what they do is they do a live edge and they split it in half. Yeah. And they put the two live edges towards each other in the middle. And then they so they have that canyon area, and then they're putting in little Star Wars ships and filling it in with resin, so it looks like that scene, which is so cool. It's probably crazy expensive, but for the people who have the money to do that, that would be an awesome addition to the home. The nice thing about this Death Star is you can you can kind of get away with not doing very much. Mm -hmm. We'll come back. We're going to do a little bit more just pure white on it, too. If you haven't filled in your center of the laser, you can kind of take your gray color or maybe even the color you use down here and just kind of fill it in. Just you, you leave a little bit of your outline so you know where it's at. We'll play that up. You don't have to leave very much. We'll just leave just <laughs> the tiniest bit. It looks like a creature, Paul. It's got the two eyes waka, and waka, then the waka. mouth. It's like a. Oh man! Now you pointed it out, and I'm I never going to And mine does, looks it. the same way. It's like Jack Skellington, but like totally. It's Robopack, man. <laughs> That's so funny. So actually, while well, I've got this um, going there, I'm going to take mix up a little bit of our dark color, just our dark blue and the red, and I'm just going to just give a little crescent here. So I just put the color around the rim, and then you can just kind of brush around to bring it, to soften it up. You don't need a lot of that color on there. So tomorrow is some special lunar day because it's 5, 5, 23, and 2 plus 3 is 5, so it's 5, 5, 5, plus it's Friday, so it's fifth day a week, so you've got 5, 5, 5, 5, and it's a full moon with a lunar eclipse. And it's Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> so I might be margar making margaritas when I get home from golfing tomorrow. <laughs> All right, we can probably... Since Jenny pointed out that it looks like a face, face. No, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna let you do. I that. never noticed it before until I noticed it on mine. I was like, "Is that just mine?" And then I saw yours. I mean, no, it's not just mine. I'm not gonna let you sabotage it that way. <laughs> Rule two thirty-seven. I think you keep changing the number. No, no. Maybe it's three twenty-seven. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> All right. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna work on our trees again. See, I'm actually digging. Because our chat's disconnected. Oh, and then it reconnected. Yeah. Okay. Everybody got the chat working? Yeah. All right. Hopefully. <laughs> I'm actually um, liking this color combination. Mm -hmm. Feels a little bit more natural. All right. So it's we're going to. It's endorific. It's <laughs> endorific. We're going to do our next row of trees. And so what we're going to do for that next row is we are going to. Um, 
basically do the same technique that we used before, but we're going to use a little bit darker of a blue or smoky color, I guess. So I've still got some of my mix over here, so I'm just going to add a little bit more blue to it and a little bit of my red. And I want to add a little bit of the yellow, so it kind of, you don't want it to be green, but a little greenish hint is appropriate. So what are the colors? Blue, red, yellow, and a little white? No so? white. No white, okay. No. Just the blue, okay. red, and yellow. So these ones you can, if you've got like a tree on here that's kind of wonky and you don't love it, you can go a little bit above that. These are going to be, some of them maybe a little taller. Maybe some of them a little shorter. But what we're building up here is dimension. Um, these are going to have a little bit more definition to them in that they're going to stand out from each other a little bit more. But you still want to have the what I call white, uh, like chatter, static is what I. That's why I started to say white noise, Check. but static in between. So what I mean by that is if I zoom in, we don't just have like straight lines in between the trees. We've got little tops of other shrubs and things like that. You can keep mixing as you need. And maybe do another one that comes up a little bit higher right there. We definitely still want to let some of these, oops, I just put my hand on the microphone. Sorry if that caused a problem. So how many rows of trees do we end up with? Three? Just, yeah, these two and then the big four big. or five trees okay. in the foreground, yeah. And some of these are taller than the background trees. Yep. Okay. Just a little bit. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I want to scoop it down here so you really get a, a hint of that background trees. So as I work my way across here, let me, let me kind of get a little bit more of this over here resolved before I start getting distracted. So same thing, I'm going to wipe my brush off after I do a few, and zoom out a bit, and just kind of softly fluff this color out. So as I work my way across, I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll just kind of give myself a little marker there, and just kind of work from there. Mudge this out. So I'm going to tilt this because I got that little bit of glare. Ah, there we go. So you can see it's starting to create this second little layer of trees. I'm just going to keep mixing. Oh. What's that? Kim, Kim says, I have to leave now. Long night ahead. Packing up my girlfriend. We're picking up my girlfriend from the airport. Heading west to Tampa. Have a great weekend. Prom, etc. Mark is staying on to watch. Awesome. Yes. He's taking up pencil drawing. Yay. That's something I actually nice. would love to, to do some, some classes online. I mean, Paul and I both know a lot of different techniques, different art forms. So I always feel like we need to just make time to do that. I am not the best pencil drawer. <laughs> well, then you can practice along with Mark. <laughs> yeah, well, we should work on what we're not good at. Mm -hmm. It's true. I actually, it's funny because I actually, 
I say that, but then I think I'm actually probably better than I give myself credit for. I just don't spend a lot of time doing it. So I'm just kind of letting this slope off to the left. I don't want to lose too much of that further background. The further background is just there so it's not so abrupt anyway. It's really easy to just do like two layers and have it feel just like it just ended abruptly. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but it just feels a little bit more organic if we can just add that one extra little hint. Make mine a little darker. Yeah. I've got glare too, like the lighting. We have just the lighting like straight down on my painting. I think we should get another one of these over there. Does that help? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. I like that. Now you can come back again and like we did on the, the first time through, you can come back with your smallest brush. It really helps to come back and just add some branches. Now keep in mind, these are redwoods. They're fairly full, but you if you get too full, you lose the idea that it's uh, a tree, it just kind of starts getting to be just a big blob, which sometimes is okay. If you're a subscriber, we've got, did you post our paintings for May? Yeah. So we got a Monet painting. Uh, I put it down here so we can show it for people online. That's one that... Uh, it's right here. When we start painting trees, I don't want you thinking about trees. <laughs> That's coming up May, I want to say the 24th, somewhere around then. Yeah, so here's the Monet. It's not the 24th. You know, this is one that's really interesting because it does not look as good in pictures mm -hmm. as it does in person, which is kind of the opposite of the way paintings usually work. When this is done. And then Jenny's colorful bear. I really like this one. Yeah, I didn't like it at first. It took me a while. You should have called it Cosmic Bear. I did. Oh, okay. Cosmic Grizzly Bear. Is the name of it. He's very cosmic seeming. Yeah, he is. He's, he's cosmic. <laughs> it's far out. <laughs> very far out. Very far out? Very far out. <laughs> Are you using your smallest brush now? Yeah. You can get away with using your number four doing this, but. I like to kind of just do this this way. It's really easy for people to just kind of go through and just do lines off the sides. And that doesn't work very good. Usually it looks very planned, but for some reason, just kind of doing little squiggles side to side works. Make sure that as you're doing this, that you leave a little bit of your background showing. Everything kind of feels like right now, like it's kind of sloping off to the left and that's okay. Cause we're going to fix that when we do our foreground trees. You can add a little bit of water if you want to. Thin this paint down. Yeah, especially as it 
starts drying on the palette. If you haven't mixed a ton. I tend to mix smaller little batches and keep mixing as I go. Jenny tends to mix all of it at once. <laughs> Which, I mean, there's benefits to doing it both ways. My way is the better. I'm just kidding. I want to see what other, if I have any other trivia that I forgot. The language of Ewok combines Tibetan and Nepalese. You know what would really be a good language would be the sound of more wine hitting the bottom of my... Okay. <laughs> so if you lose, like if you want to bring back a little bit more of your bright color, if you lost it a little bit more than you wanted to, you can always add more back in. Ooh, got a little bit lighter than I wanted. The fog. Yeah. Indoor mist. Technically, Endor didn't miss because they did aid in knocking down that. Ha ha ha. All right. So we're going to need to let all this dry. Um, this Death Star is probably pretty nice and dry. Um, let me zoom out. And uh, I'm going to... But I think it's time to start adding some stars. Yeah. So I've actually got a spot right here where my paint started to lift a little bit. And that'll be probably a good place to put like my big main star. Um, but to do our stars, there's a couple different ways you can do it. In the studios, we would teach people to um, take like their small brush and use the back side of it. Um, but if you don't like doing that, you can use the small brush. I actually kind of like doing it with just the bristles on the small brush. That works for me too. So you can just start adding lots of stars. The advantage to using the bristle end, I mean, I'm sorry, the non-bristle end is you don't have to be quite as meticulous. You can really kind of Use it like a stamp and go for it. The thing you want to watch out for, though, is it's really easy to create like a pattern. So I tend to try to think of it like doing, uh, we used to really be into telescopes when our son was younger, and we had a really cool one. And one of the things that's really interesting to look at is star clusters. And it's just like exactly what it sounds like. It's a cluster of stars. So I try to think of like doing clusters and then a few random stars not associated with the clusters. So as you get a little lower, you're going to get less because the sky is lighter. But, I mean, you can definitely get a couple down in here. Does not hurt anything. And you might end up painting over it when we do our bigger trees. You can come back and add another one if you need to. You can even add some... Poking through, showing through. Jenny, we're doing stars. Jenny's way. So I really like doing the clusters and then adding just a few random stars around. Because it's really easy to... Um, just again, just kind of end up with it looking like a pattern. This takes that away. And then let me show you how I'm going to do that big, brighter star. And you can do more than one if you want. I'm going to start out, I'm going to put a nice big dollop of white paint right there. Then I'm going to take my index finger. And just swirl it out. Did you know that the, uh, you know, in the beginning of Star Wars, the big scrolling text? Yeah. 
that was the it was just a big sheet of mm -hmm. black paper with yellow letters on it. They just moved the camera over. Isn't that funny? I had no idea. So I'm putting a new dollop of white in there. And I'm just going to take my smallest brush and I'm just going to start in the middle and I'm just going to pull paint up. I'm going to pull paint down. I'm going to pull paint left and right. Then we can do some little smaller ones, the angles. And then one last fresh dollop of white right in the middle. I kind of did an exact, well, that's a little bit too exaggerated, but that's all right. I mean, I'll just live with it. And you can do another one. Like, I think I love doing these kind of stars. I think they're fun. I'm doing right there, a little bit smaller. As long as you do the brush strokes from the middle outward. Yep, you gotta Otherwise do the middle, middle out. End up blunt on the ends. Fresh dab right in the middle. Yeah, two's good. We're we looking on time. We are at 6.52. No, I mean like the length of time. 120. We're doing good. Probably got another half hour. A little bit of longer painting, but I guess not really. I guess we're usually right about two hours, aren't we? One and a half to two hours, somewhere between the, that. Yeah. But I feel like if we're doing Star Wars, we can... We can dedicate some we can, time. Yeah, we can. You know, the first movie took four years. To make? Yeah, that's what I hmm. read on one of the little factoids today. And he never joined the guild. Oh, really? George Lucas. Was he against it? No, he didn't want to pay for it. Oh. <laughs> Cheapskate. Well, he couldn't get any of the studios to pick it up. Oh, that's right. Yeah, they thought it was be, could be a complete failure. Yeah, and then so he had to self-produce it, and the only way he could self-produce it was by not. He signed with a with a theater for dis, or for a studio for distribution, but they had nothing to do mm -hmm. with producing it. And now look how huge Star Wars is. Yeah. So huge, like we never would have thought it would be like that. I've got a wonky end to my one star here. I'm going to see if I can touch that up. All right. So we are going to start talking about our uh, bigger trees. Bigger redwoods. Yep, we're going to do our big redwoods. And so we're only going to do like four. We're going to do like five. We could do four, but... I like odd numbers. Um, and so we're going to use our number eight brush. Actually, no, let's, let's use our big brush. And we're going to go ahead and just use some straight black. Biggest brush, straight black. Yeah, you can add a little, let's add a little bit of yellow to it and a little bit of blue. Just so it's not so intensely black. Just brings it down just a smidge. Charcoal. Yep, dark, dark, dark charcoal. And I'm just going to go, okay, this is going to be a little bit taller than my background. I'm going to go ahead and go right here. Now, redwood trees are pretty straight. They're little homes they built in these. They're so cute. I want to live in an Ewok village. Technically, one of our dog's middle names is Wicket. <laughs> Chiaki. Because she looks like an Ewok. She does. Your tree's leaning. <laughs> it really is leaning a lot. That's all right. We can fix that. <laughs> Those Ewoks are like, ah, it's blowing over. Show us how you fix the leaning tree. Build up the base on the right side. Yep. <laughs> It's going to be a big tree.
and then we'll fix the top part. The bottom part's the only part that's really that important. We'll fix the top part when we start doing branches. Now, these are kind of like we're up in the tops of the trees, so I'm going to start here and work my way up just because I'm fixing this one. So we want it to be like wider at the bottom though, right? So we're yep, tapering, for sure. tapering to a smaller tree at the top. So it's kind of that Yeah, this one's a little shape. bit more tape, tapered because of the adjusting for being, you know, I was totally leaning off to the left when I painted <laughs> it too. I was like leaning on my arm. I was like, oh geez. Well, I wasn't going to say anything, but it was a little out of control. It's fine if you say it, but do you have to have the cackly laugh with it? Of course. Of course. Don't you know me by now? If you don't know me I know by that's okay. Now. We don't need that serenade. <laughs> All right. So that's good enough. That fixes that enough. It's still pretty crooked. But a little leany boy. That's all right. <laughs> Trees don't all grow 100% straight. So. so I'll just... Let's put one next to it. Kind of... Yeah. <laughs> Just draws the attention away. No. So parallel the side of your canvas. I'll do it the way I want it to do. <laughs> Dude, stop. <laughs> not funny. <laughs> yes, it is. It's not. Do we have a set number of trees we need to put in here? Yeah, about five. Okay. Four, uh, four on the right and one on the left. Okay. Now these just go all the way off the bottom of the canvas. They don't really get. Lost in anything. Again, just going to kind of. Tap it in. Just tap it in. A little tippy tap. Tap, tap, tap a room. I actually want to go to the Redwoods. I haven't been there since I was seven. We should do that. Mm-hmm. It'd be fun. We thought we had it all planned out in 2017. We were going to go to Yosemite and the Redwood Forest. And we realized, wow, the Redwood Forest is actually a long ways from Yosemite. Well, we could have done it. Yosemite was back. our, that was our top destination. Yeah. And so we just we ended just up would have had to instead of just we would have had to jaunt over to the coast a little bit more from Reading. Yeah, so we ended up just doing Yosemite, which was was amazing, breathtaking. But yeah, redwoods we gotta see. I remember we climbed that giant rock called it's like a moral rock or something. Did you ever go on that? The big rock that has like I don't remember tons of stairs and you get just lightning strike warnings at the top. I don't think we did that. So I just use the brush. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. You can see there's not a lot of fine detail going into this. It's just kind of blotting it on. Do I think I'm only going to do four total? I feel it. Well, I might do it. Probably what I'll do is I'll sneak one more, like kind of in the middle here. Yeah, let's do that kind of a smaller one, like right here. Did they really build the little village in some trees, or was that all like special effect? Built I don't know. I mean, they, they didn't really have like CGI back then. Mm -mm. And I'm going to do one more kind of bigger one on the left side. And this one I'm going to go ahead and let it go up over my Death Star a little bit.
I can hear the little Ewok sounds. Yum nub. Didn't they add fireworks in when yeah. they redid the Yeah, they'd added a bunch last of stuff. One, yeah. So I feel like what we're wanna do too a little bit here is take a little bit of our black that we mix that we've got. I'm gonna add just a little bit of blue and just right along the base here. It's almost like we're doing like a dark fog right along the bottom edge here, just to So it's not quite, it feels a little bit more connected this way. We still have our light kind of smoky fogginess, but if we just go straight off the bottom, it feels disconnected to me. And so I like to always come in and add a little bit of some extra darkness down in here so that it can feel a little bit more grounded. You can also take a little bit of like some more blue and you can add some hints of some trunks in the background. Of grass. Hmm? Well, it'd no. be tall for grass. No, it's like trunks for the background. Like the back row of trees. Mm. Not like specifically for any one tree, but just it kind of breaks it up a little bit, kind of keeps it remembering that there are trees in the background. It's not just fog. It's heavily forested. Yeah. Okay, so that feels pretty good. We'll have to take a picture of this when it's done and <laughs> change the photo on our shopping cart. <laughs> All right, so Jenny's already moving on to the next part of doing the Death Star, and that's oh, what I we're didn't doing. know that you were doing next. I was like, I thought you were pretty much close to done with the Death Star. Oh no, I was like, I need a little more white on here. Nope, that's our next step. Okay, so I'm just going to take a little bit of water, just a drop from my water jar and just going to add a lot of just white and you, know, you can add a little bit of you know gray to it if you want to but really it's like we're just going to come through and in particular up here we're just Adding some extra little texture. Maybe you can add a little bit of a highlight along there. I think feel like mine's a little egg shaped. The death egg. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Oh, the death egg is what my parents tried to send home with us after Easter. <laughs> <laughs> Old eggs. <laughs> Yeah, Paul went to make an egg salad sandwich, and Greta and I were like, um, <laughs> that smells really bad and looks really bad. I was like, yeah, that's probably... We'd like you to live a little bit longer, so how about avoid those week-and-a-half-old Easter eggs? Yeah, we didn't know how old they were, actually. Uh, no, we did, but it was like a week-and-a-half. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't, wouldn't have been a good idea, let's just put it that way. So this time around, I'm just being a little bit more 
I don't want to call it meticulous because I'm not really being meticulous with it, but I'm being a little bit more um, smaller brushwork, a little bit more, uh, maybe a little bit less full. Like it's not quite such a dense brush. It's more streaky. It's more hash work. It's like, what do they call it? Hash? Um, Crosshatch? Crosshatch. Yeah, that's the word I was looking for. And this works good, like we got to get a little bit more around the laser. I feel weird just calling it laser, it seems so like lazy of a name. The giant death laser. And this is the kind of thing you can spend as much time or as little time as you want on this. Um, you know, obviously you want it to give the right suggestion. But really, when I painted the original, I was like, this is what I spent most of the time on the painting, just working on making this feel very textured and very broken. Very under construction. Very under construction, yes. And you can leave some of your gray areas showing. Again, it's the dark side, the back side. The back side of the moon. <laughs> of the Death Star. <laughs> and if at any point you feel like, okay, I need to re-kind of shape this thing, you can. You can pop this thing back on there. And... I think mine's just gonna probably remain pretty egg shaped but it's not too bad and I'm not putting this in like the Louvre <laughs> you're not unfortunately no I sent in my application So everything in this laser uh, concave actually does kind of like lean toward, like slope in towards the middle. It's like a big 1980s satellite dish. <laughs> it kind of is. What's the planet he blows up that was Leia's planet? Alderaan. Alderaan, yeah. Did they blow up Jimmy Smith's then? Yeah. <laughs> you know, if this starts feeling too white, you know, it's okay. You can always mix up a light gray and kind of come back over it. Um... It's all personal preference. The nice thing is about this is like you can really on your own time, you know, after we're done teaching, you can spend as much time on this as you want. If you want to get really detailed, you can get to the point of putting lights in it and cool and stuff like that. that. I've got maybe a little bit too um, too much white going on in mine. So yeah, mine's a little light, so I'm working on darkening it a bit. So it's a little more hazy.
but that's an easy fix. Like fixing over white is the easiest thing you can fix over. So. But really what I do is I'm gonna just zoom in a little bit here is like all of these little parts, all I'm really doing is like, okay, here's a little bit coming up here and there's structure coming off to the side. Maybe a little bit more structure here, maybe a little bit more here. And if you wanna add a little extra white, you can. If you get too much white, you can and get rid of it just by using a little bit more gray. This area right up in here, it looks kind of nice if it's a little bit lighter. Let me zoom out a little bit. Actually, let me move this over here. Let me get the, there we go. Um, so it does look good if you've got some sense of like, oh, there's a lighter area over on the top or something. Um, so it's not just all like, all the same tone. We're going to work on this for a few more minutes and then we're going to go back and work on our Ewok village. That actually, that little part that I just did right there, that's really what's going to help like doing this painting is this like you get these little elements of it and um, that are really broken up. You have to remember they didn't realize this. It was not a fully operational space station. But it was. Mm -hmm. Did I just ruin the ending? You just ruined it. going down in here. Does it still look like a creature to you, Jenny? Kind of. It's like the Iron Giant rusted. Oh, yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. Now I can never unsee it. Thank you. You're welcome. Anytime. I think I need to stop working on mine. Well, we're, we're going to take a break. Too much. Yeah, you're, you're, you're just going to get like way developed. We're gonna take a break and we're gonna work on the village here in just a second. And this is actually a, a more complicated process than you might think. What are you trying to do to us, Paul? Trying to make sure you end up with a painting you're happy with. <laughs> So let's take a little break from working on the Death Star. We'll come back and work on it a little bit more. Let's go ahead and we're going to work on getting our little Ewok village going. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take, let's take like our number four. And these two trees here are going to be like, we're going to have like kind of our main little platforms. And then I this think you tree. need to zoom out. Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> 
these two trees are going to have our main platforms and then this tree is going to have a platform and then we're just going to kind of suggest some other platforms around in the background um and to do that what we're going to start out with doing is i'm just going to take my number eight i think i said four but i'm going to use my number eight i'm going to take a little bit of white and i'm just going to put like a little dab of white right here and just like our stars we did up in the sky i'm just going to swirl that out and the reason we do white first is so that when we do other colors they will show up hmm. if we don't do the white first they just kind of disappear makes sense now I'm thinking that there's a little platform underneath these so I'm not doing like a full circle just kind of a semicircle. Let's do one more over here. Are they all supposed to be on the same level? Kind of. Okay. Doesn't have to be. They're very rudimentary. Okay. So then to start the other little spots, I'm just going to take a little bit of white. I'm going to do one right here. Your handle of your little brush? Yep. So just floating in the air, kind of like it's attached to something? Yeah, they're attached to other trees. That we just can't see. They're just too far away. The little forest lights. I like it. Let's do like a couple through here. A couple as in three. There we go. Maybe just do one over here too. Like I'm thinking these are all connected together with bridges and stuff, so similar in height. And we'll probably end up doing this kind of like smudge thing a couple more times. Um, because we're going to need to, uh, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and do it right now. I'm just going to use my smallest brush. I'm just going to take some red. Just kind of in a little halo. With blood in the trees. Huh? Blood in the trees. Just a little bit around. Are we doing each of these? Yeah. The smaller ones you can just kind of like... Do a dot. Yeah. You can just usually just like actually just take your small brush and just a little swirly whirl. You a little tiny bit of paint, and just a little swirly whirl. Nice thing about this is if you get a little bit outside of your white, it works. Now the other thing we can do is on these two trees right here, you can take a little bit of this red and just kind of streak it up and down the tree a little bit. I can't see my tree trunks. That got a little carried away, but it's all right. I'm just got a little bit of light shining.
<laughs> sorry, you I'm trying push, to scoot backwards. You just push the whole table. Oh, sorry. I'm just trying to scoot my chair backwards. Are you okay? Yeah, the, the arms of my chair keep getting stuck under the desk. Hmm. That's annoying. Why don't you just lower your chair a little bit? I could have done that. <laughs> Now you can go ahead and take, since the way we left that white there, you can go ahead and just take a little bit of the yellow. Just go ahead and plop it right on there. You want to make sure you get rid of all the white, though. I don't want it to look like stars. I'm going to add a little bit of some yellow to our streaks, to our highlights on our trees. This is just the fires, adding a little hint of some texture, some highlight. Those Ewoks are taking some big risks with these fires up in those trees. Yeah, they are. Now, the other thing is, is they've got little platforms, so... I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of my yellow now. And I need a little bit more yellow on my brush than that. Maybe a little bit of white too. Let's do a little bit of white. There we go. And just these couple, just these like two or three. So what are you doing? You're making some little horizontal. Yeah, it's just a little hint. It's like a, almost it's like a white little, and yellow. A little flying saucer. Almost. <laughs> white and yellow. Is that what you're using? Yep. A little bit under this one, too. Probably any of the ones that are on the trees. The big trees. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can always, like, if you got too much white, you can always just kind of add a little bit of yellow back in. You can always add a little bit of extra bright yellow that you just used. You can add a little tiny bit so that fires maybe a little hint. We're going to wrap this up in the next couple of minutes. Yeah, I actually like the way this color turned out. Mm -hmm. You know, I know we're like, I know it sounds like I'm just reassuring myself because we made a mistake. Um, maybe there's we a don't make mistakes. We can't be little accidents. It was a hundred percent a happy little accident because this is more peaceful seeming to me. Now, the other thing I do want to do is I do want to take a little bit of black and just kind of put a little bit of black underneath these platforms, just a little line, and you can actually add a little shadow, too, that comes down on the tree a bit.
cozy little Ewoks. I want to live in their cozy little village. It's funny because, like, I mean, we were the demographic that Ewoks were made for. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, in, you know, in hindsight, going back and watching it, I'm like, hmm. Now, Jenny's actually adding some highlights on her trees. Are you going to copy me? No. <laughs> you can. It looks show, good. I'm going to show people how to do it if they want to. That was a good decision on my part. <laughs> Actually, I do like it a lot. You have to be careful, though, because it's really easy to get it too... To where it looks like the tree's on fire. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just mixed yellow and red together to make orange. So it's yeah. not, I'm not like putting a ton of paint on here. It's just one little coat of some orange. Just a little bit. I just added a couple little Ewoks. No way. <laughs> what are they doing? They're partying. They're roasting a... They're roasting C-3PO. No, wait, no, C-3PO is the god. They worshipped C-3PO. Yeah. The great gold robot. He was such a worrywart. That's what always bothered me about him. He was, like he was neurotic. Such... He was. He had major OCD. Well, I mean, he's, he's a robot. Neurotic. He has to be. <laughs> it's but like yeah, he has he to was stick neurotic. to his programming. <laughs> Super neurotic. So I'm pretty much going to call this done as far as the instruction is concerned. Um, oh, I want to do one thing real quick. But again, feel free to um, keep, working on, keep it. working on the details. On you can even make little rope bridges. Well, no, I was going to say not. On, yeah, you could. <laughs> you totally could. Let me show you how to do a rope bridge. Show us, Paul. It'd be easiest just to kind of go. You know, there are some uh, tree houses you can stay in that are, I think, down in Klamath Falls area. And I think there's some up in Washington, too. What color are you using? I just used that orange you used for the highlights. Hmm. That works. I don't know if that worked, but it just gets to the point where it's maybe too fine. Just like you. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Ba -dum, boom. It works. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so you can just kind of keep working on this as much as you want for as long as you want. Um, obviously, like, I feel like mine, I still need to work on my... I want to see a room bridge. Tilt your canvas over to me. I can't really see it on here. Where are they? Oh, okay. You don't want to do too much. It's just got to be subtle. Um, I just I don't want to keep everybody feeling like they have to stay watching this forever. <laughs> it never ends. It really doesn't. <laughs> Ever. Oh my gosh, these Ewoks. I want to live that with them. <laughs> it's so cozy. Yeah, but you, okay, but think about it this way, though. They lit up a Wookiee thinking that's a good dinner. <laughs> so Maybe I, it is. Do you really want to? Maybe it is a good dinner. How come they, like, saved Princess Leia, but then they were like, Luke and Han, they look, he look, they look like dinner. I know, they did say... Well, because she, like, rescued Wicked or something, didn't she? She gave him food or something. Okay. Well, she rescued him, too. Yay, I like it, I like it. I'm happy. 
Yeah, this is like one of those paintings. It's like, it's not so much that the that the techniques are difficult. It's just it can be very time consuming, um, if you let it be. What I wanted to do, I wanted to highlight the canal. Canal. Oh. Channel. Yeah. I put lights in mine. Yeah, you can do that too. I just mixed up a darker color. My brush going across the canvas right now kind of sounded like a TIE fighter. That's funny. Yeah, so that's all I'm going to do on mine. I like mine. Jenny, yours is a, you've got a lot going on on yours, too. What did you do? You just did yellow for lights? I mixed white and yellow, and I did plain yellow for a few of them. Yeah, so I'll show you what she did. I'll do the same thing. Mix up a real pale yellow. I'm just going to keep it simple. And just... Oh, I know what I wanted to do, too. I want to just enhance the shadow on the laser. So I'm mixing up my dark, just dark blue and the red. And I've got a drip that's right, getting ready to come off. And I'm just going to really get this color right along that edge. And I'm just kind of like using the cross hatching technique, like we've been using. Just like that. Mine's a little bit wonky too. Not as perfect as the first one. It never is. Like it's never the same as the first. I would suck at working at one of those sweatshops where you recreate <laughs> masterpieces to sell on the black market. But I can see that like, I've got that instinct right now to just keep working. <laughs> and you can. It's a nice thing about this. And you know, if you wanted to pull up a photo and just like dive in and really get detailed, go for it. I'm done. I signed mine. Okay, sweet. Not really sure. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to go ahead and sign mine as well. And we're going to call it good for tonight. It's good. Good. I'm going to go right down here in the bottom corner. And like always, let's see how Jenny Oops. did. Jenny met a moth. <laughs> oh, look at that. <laughs> Jenny made a big mess. White paint everywhere. Right, so let's get my... So I'm going to, for those of you who are just stumbling... Oops, sorry. Wow, you are just... A, <laughs> I'm a bull in a china shop You right are now. a bull in a china shop tonight. All right. So I'm going to show you guys. So original, the original painting, again, we kind of had a communication issue. and Communication breakdown. Ship, shipped out the wrong colors. Well, no, just one color. Just we missed sending one color. It's, but the turquoise because I figured with what you told me that you must have mixed it and I just didn't really yeah. question it because you're you're the color guy <laughs> but I actually like I said I actually like the way this turned out better because I felt like the green is a little bit acidic yeah sometimes we have a tendency of doing that a little bit in our industry of using colors that don't feel 
natural. I definitely think the one on the left looks softer and more serene. More ethereal. Yeah. All right, so let's see Jenny's version. So here's my egg, big egg in the sky. You're, it doesn't look like an egg. It looks <laughs> fine. I yes. did do little rope bridges. They're just hard to see because I didn't highlight them. I just used like some watered down black. Yeah. I actually really like how your little village turned out. <laughs> and you did a little bit more of like other trees in the lower foreground, and that looks good too. Mm -hmm. um, and I did a little comet. <laughs> or shooting star. You did a shooting star. It's not really like thinking about it again. I probably would have picked a different star to do that too. Being right above the Death Star, I'm not really into that, but... Well, it could be one of the Rebel fleet, like, coming into, uh, <laughs> out of hyperspace, too. I'm out of control! All right, we're going to come back with our fancy... Here we are. Here we are! Oh, look, you And our, our blinking weird lights, they're blinking, like, pink and blue. Pink and blue. Oh, my gosh, I can't look at that. Ah. <laughs> so, anyway, I'm out of... I'm sitting out of the light. So thanks for joining us tonight, you guys. That was a lot of fun. If you guys have any questions or anything like that, um, you can head over to our Facebook group, the GoBox Art Crate group. Not our business page, but the... It's an actual group you have to request to join. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we are... Jenny's more on there more than I am. I, a lot more. I, I don't go on Facebook very much anymore. <laughs> so anyway, thanks so much for joining us tonight. May the 4th be with you. May the 4th be with you, yeah, and we will be on here, I think May 19th is the Grizzly Bear, and then this is the way. seven days after that is <laughs> is your Monet painting. This is this the is way. This is the way. Yeah. I think I was thinking about that the other day. I was thinking, you know, they've really have introduced a new, new catchphrase for Star mm -hmm. Wars. It's always been yeah, May the have. Force be with you, and now this is the way is kind of... How did you get way over there again? This is the way. <laughs> She's like... <laughs> Exit stage right is the way. <laughs> so anyway, guys, thanks so much. May the force be with you. Thanks for joining us May the us force again. be with you yeah. <laughs> and the force. So yeah. we will see you next time. Keep painting and uh, join our group on Facebook. We'll talk to you later. Bye. And